testing of esophageal mucosa to identify neoplastic patterns. This video demonstrates how to use the laser endomicroscopy equipment and how to distinguish between normal gastric mucosa, non-neoplastic Barrett's mucosa, and Barrett's neoplasia. Detailed imaging with confocal laser endomicroscopy requires prior application of contrast agents. Common contrast agents are fluorescein and acroflavine. Fluorescein highlights the cytoplasm, extracellular matrix, and capillaries. Fluorescein does not stain nuclei. While fluorescein is injected, acroflavin is sprayed topically onto the mucosa. It stains nuclei, but the penetration is limited, and therefore deeper layers of the mucosa are not contrasted. The images seen here are captured after acroflavin spraying. This is an endoscopy suite with equipment set up for confocal laser imaging. A spraying catheter is inserted in the working channel for topical acroflavin spraying. Here is a long segment Barrett's esophagus with a circumscript lesion that is about to be examined in detail with confocal endomicroscopy. These are the principal steps that need to be performed. First, perform thorough standard white light endoscopy to examine the Barrett segment for suspicious areas. Then, place suspicious lesions within the confocal imaging window. The gastroesophageal junction is an area in continuous motion. Therefore, it is sometimes challenging to create stable contact with the lesion that is required to minimize imaging artifacts. Once a stable position is achieved, endomicroscopic images are obtained and interpreted in vivo. The final step of the procedure is biopsy sampling from lesions that are deemed abnormal. This is the standard setting during endomicroscopy. While one set of monitors displays the standard white light imaging, the confocal laser microscopy tower picks up the in-depth mucosal imaging. Suspicious white light lesions are placed within the confocal imaging window. The endoscopist then looks at the confocal laser endomicroscopy tower monitor to interpret the images. Using the foot pedal, the endoscopist can capture still images of the endomicroscopy. These images can then be used to determine the need to perform a forceps biopsy. Confocal imaging provides surface tomography of the mucosa, while traditional histology demonstrates a transverse view. To distinguish between benign and neoplastic mucosa, the original classification by Kieslick and co-workers uses features of vascular and cellular architecture of the esophagus. In normal Barrett's mucosa, subepithelial capillaries have a regular shape, and a columnar-lined mucosa with in-between dark mucin in goblet cells is found. In contrast, Barrett's neoplasias show irregular capillaries with leakage of vessels with brightness and heterogeneity in the lamina propria. The cellular architecture neoplasias show black cells with irregular apical and distal borders and shapes with dark contrast. According to these characteristics, preliminary data show that identification of Barrett's esophagus and Barrett's neoplasia have a sensitivity and specificity ranging between 90 and 98 percent. This is normal gastric mucosa. Imaging is performed after injection of 10 percent fluorescein. Notice the small regular formation of gastric glands in a mosaic pattern. Also notice the cobblestone appearance of epithelial cells. The honeycombed pattern and cobblestone epithelium is apparent despite motion artifact. Notice the bright fluorescence between the cells secondary to fluorescein in the extracellular matrix. Look for the honeycombing, cobblestone epithelium and small glands in the next few images of gastric mucosa.
In this image, the cobblestone appearance of the epithelium is very visible. This cobblestone appearance is not found in Barrett's epithelium. We will now move on to normal Barrett's epithelium. The most important feature that distinguishes Barrett's epithelium from other mucosa is the presence of goblet cells. The mucin in the goblet cells gives the cells a dark central spot in the epithelium. Also, note the appearance of cylindrical, regular cells and the presence of a brush border. This image of normal Barrett's demonstrates motion artifact. Limit motion artifact by creating a stable interface, applying mild pressure and continuous gentle suction. The next images illustrate the typical confocal endomicroscopy characteristics of Barrett's with neoplasia defined as either high-grade intraepithelial neoplasias or carcinoma. The most important hallmarks of neoplasia are loss of regular architecture, the presence of irregular black cells, and the pooling of fluorescein. The black spots of the polygonal cells represent nuclei. Vascular compromise and or angiogenesis in malignant tissue leads to extravasation of the fluorescein contrast and creates pools of contrast in samples of Barrett's intraepithelial neoplasia. Loss of architecture and increased fluorescence are the typical features of Barrett's adenocarcinomas.